Mysteries are all around and all elusive. The universe in which we live is vast, endless, and contains a myriad of things we've yet to find out. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three extraordinary findings and phenomenons. Strange life has been found trapped inside these giant cave crystals. In 2013, within the vastness of Mexico's Nica mine, researchers uncovered subterranean crystals that contain mysterious ancient microbes that scientists speculate have been residing in the Mexican caves for far over 50,000 years. These strange microbes seem to have been in a sleep-like state for millennia and have inhabited tiny gaps in the crystal edifices. Researchers found a way to take the microbes into their labs and to awaken them after thousands of years of stagnant slumber. Penelope Boston, the director of the Astrobiology Institute of NASA, has stated about the finding. These organisms are so extraordinary. The Nika mine is an undeniably stunning place on Earth. However, it is also one of the most dangerous ones. In fact, the Nika mine is one of the planet's most inhospitable domains we know of, with temperatures ranging from 45 to 65 degrees Celsius and eternally high levels of humidity. Furthermore, the environment is incredibly acidic, with the caves plagued by terrible darkness. These microbes live 300 meters underneath the Earth, meaning they are unable to photosynthesize and instead use the biological process of chemosynthesis, where they use various natural minerals residing within crystals to feed. These wondrous microbes are unlike anything we have ever witnessed. Their bodies seemingly shut down during their several thousand year slumbers, but they have managed to survive countless disasters and catastrophes that raged on the surface of the earth, all the while never knowing they were happening, fully immersed in their docile state. Boston likewise stated, other people have made longer term claims for the antiquity of organisms that were still alive, but in this case, these organisms are all very extraordinary, they are not very closely related to anything in the known genetic databases. Scientists grew various cultures of the microbes in the labs which allowed them to gain insight into them. Boston claims, much to my surprise, we got things to grow. It was laborious, we lost some of them, that's just the game. They've got needs we just can't fulfill. Despite Boston and her team's supposed evidence, not everyone in the field is convinced. Some scientists argue that they could have attached the microbes to drills and made it look as though they came from inside the crystals, when in reality, these could be very mundane types of microbes. In other words, a small group of researchers believes it to be a hoax. Purification Lopez Garcia has officially stated her views regarding the finding. I think that the presence of microbes trapped within fluid inclusions in Nika crystals is in principle possible. But contamination during drilling with microorganisms attached to the surface of these crystals or living in tiny fractures constitutes a very serious risk. I am very skeptical about the veracity of this finding until I see the evidence. Alternatively, Lopez Garcia's views were challenged by Brent Christner, a microbiologist from Florida. Reviving microbes from samples of 10,000 to 50,000 years is not that outlandish based on previous reports of microbial resuscitations in geological materials hundreds of thousands to millions of years old. He argues, pointing out how Boston's team worked tirelessly to be as thorough as possible in order to avoid any form of contamination. Boston's equipment was sterile and clean. Her team wore appropriate protective clothing and the beings they found in the crystals are similar, though not the same, to other types of extremophile microbes found elsewhere on Earth. Their research is yet to be officially confirmed as true, but if nothing else, the existence of these tiny beings shows that life, against all odds, has its ways to prevail. There is a huge void near our galaxy. One fact about the cosmic world might be surprising. Galaxies are unevenly clustered around the universe, clumping together at random. Despite the assumption of some, one galaxy does not begin when another one ends. Instead, they are spread all throughout. We are part of something dubbed the local group, 
which consists of our very own Milky Way and the nearby Andromeda Galaxy with a cluster of tiny dwarf galaxies surrounding us. It is close to the Milky Way that the local void resides. The local void is a structure in our cosmic neighborhood, so to speak, that contains nearly no galaxies proper, dwarf or otherwise. The Milky Way borders the void directly. Our galaxy, however, is moving further away from the void at about 260 km per second. This is a result of the fact that matter attracts matter. This is also the reason as to why such voids exist. Because of the way gravity works, matter clumps together, thus leaving chunks of space completely devoid of anything at all. These voids, thus, only increase in their size as time goes on and more matter compacts together. Nothingness in space is significantly more common than galaxies or stars or planets. The Cosmic Flows 3 chart depicts over 17,000 galaxies near our Milky Way and it also depicts the Cosmic Void. The point of the Cosmic Flow is to showcase an accurate compendium of our observable nearby universe. The space voids are an incredibly interesting subject because learning more about them could help us better understand dark matter and how it works. Unfortunately, it is a Herculean task to try and study the local void as it resides right behind the central Milky Way, meaning seeing into it is virtually impossible as of right now. Scientists will have to find an alternative way to study the void other than visually searching for it. Researchers did, however, find a way to trace the dwarf galaxies nearby when it comes to monitoring the void. They found that the nearest dwarf galaxy to the void travels at a shocking 350 km per second. This speed suggests that the size of the void must be immense for the faster something travels away from the void, the weaker its gravity. Thus, the larger it must be. The knowledge that we live merely 150 million light years away from this enormous empty void might sound frightening for some, but fortunately, there is absolutely no risk of us getting sucked into it. It is not a black hole, it is simply an area of space that lacks matter. In a handful of centuries, we will be much further away from it. A radio bridge 10 million light years long links colliding galaxy clusters. Astronomers have been studying galaxies Abel 0399 and Abel 0401 using the Netherland based Low Far or Low Frequency Array. Researchers discovered that both galaxies appear to be emitting long, low-frequency waves towards each other, connected by a bridge of plasma. Federica Gavoni, the leading author of the research that discovered this, stated, The presence of this filament stimulated our curiosity. Both the galaxies in question are galaxy clusters within several dozen others, surrounded by magnetic fields. Magnetic fields possess extremely fast-moving electrons that then produce something called synchrotron radiation that can be read as radio emissions. As such, a question the scientists had to ask was whether the two Abel galaxies' connections also had a magnetic field. The best way to do that was to search for radio emissions. The team then found the radio emissions bridge between them stretching an incredible 10 million light-years. Gavoni said about the emissions, when we obtained this great image, we were really excited, but of course, we wanted to be sure. At the beginning, we were quite cautious. However, when we decided that what we detected was real, we decided it was really important to show this result. The presence of these radio waves proves, in Gavoni's eyes, that the space between the two clustered galaxies does, indeed, possess a magnetic field. The situation between the two galaxies is, we think, quite unusual. Firstly, they are on a collision course. Secondly, scientists do not yet know whether magnetic filaments between colliding galaxies is normal for the universe or a rare phenomenon. Gavoni has stated that one of the next goals the team has is to research further into how common this occurrence might be. Due to their findings, they have been permitted to utilize the Square Kilometer Array, an up-and-coming radio wave telescope that will allow the team to increase their scope into the strange situation happening between the two colliding cluster galaxies. The cosmic web is where galaxy clusters gather, and if the situation happening between Abel 0401 and Abel 0399 is normal for the cosmos, we will surely find more evidence by searching the rest of the cosmic web's many galaxies, which in turn will help us understand our universe 
and by proxy, the world in which we live significantly better than ever before. Additionally, more research needs to go into discovering the very nature of how particles work and how they move. Our current understanding of particles, some scientists believe, is painfully rudimentary. If we find out how they work under various cosmic circumstances, we would be able to figure out more about the connections between the two able galaxies and far more than that. It might help us to understand the very foundation of the cosmos. Evidently, this is an ardently vital discovery that brings with it the undeniable hope of a future new era where we can truly understand the way our home, this universe, works and how we, too, fit into the puzzle piece. But what do you make of these interesting yet fascinating discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.